Hey guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we continue to solve the 2021 final exam on thermodynamics. This is question three, part two, which is a question on itself, so it could be very well part four. It reads like so. A house uses an air conditioner to maintain its interior temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. The outside temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. The interior of the house is subject to heat gains through the temperature difference that exists between the exterior and the interior of the house at 14 kilowatts. The interior of the house is subject to heat gains from electrical equipment operating inside the house at 2 kilowatts. Determine the minimum power required to operate the air conditioner. So let's start with drawing a house. Those of you who are familiar with the channel will know that I have amazing drawing skills. So let's do here we go. That's the house. Let me make it a bit fancier. Let's put a little. Okay, how's that? And this house has a nice cool 21 degrees Celsius going on, but outside is very hot. There's 40 degrees Celsius outside. And we know that because there's this difference in temperature, that's a driving force for heat transfer. So we know there will be a Q going from the outside in, right? So we have energy going from the outside in, and this Q actually is quantified for us from the problem and it says this is 14 kilowatts so it's 14 kilowatts going into this house and in addition to that we have equipment so we can imagine a fridge or tv or something like that uh, and that equipment is hooked up to electricity and electricity is going like so and then because this energy is going in these equipment are producing also heat and this house this heat is also warming up the house so we can have we can draw simplify this by just putting another arrow coming from the outside in and this one is carrying two kilowatts, right? So in spite of the equipment being inside the house, this energy is coming from the outside. So that means that our AC that we installed inside our place to keep our house warm needs to remove the same 16 kilowatts, right? So it needs to remove the same 16 kilowatts to ensure that this house keeps the nice 21 degrees Celsius inside. If by any reason it moves it less than 16 kilowatts, then we would see this 21 increase, right? On the other hand, if it removes more than 16, so it removes 17 or so, then we would see the temperature drop, right? If we want to keep it at 21, then it means remove precisely the 16 that are going in. Okay, so how does an AC operate? You guys probably remember this. We have the hot reservoir, we have our AC in the middle, and we have our cold reservoir. In this case, our cold reservoir is our house that we want to keep cool and nice. So what we want to do is we want to extract energy from the cool reservoir, that is our house, so we can extract energy, so this is a Q low, and we want to send this energy into our hot reservoir, right? So we want to go against the natural tendency of energy, and this is hot, Q hot. But to do that, we know that we cannot do that unless we give some input, some energy into our AC for it to do that, for it to operate on the reverse cycle. And that is in the form of work. Generally, we do in the form of electricity, but we put work to denote that. The first law of thermodynamics, if we apply a little energy balance, this little change in energy, this will be zero. And if we apply a little energy balance on the AC here, you'll see that everything going in minus whatever is going out, you'll see that my QL plus my work in has to be equal to my Q out, right? Because we can't create or destroy energy. And I'm going to go ahead and put the dots just to remind ourselves that we're looking using rates here, right? On kilowatts as opposed to just joules. Brilliant. The other thing that we need to remember is that the efficiency of the AC that we generally call COP, so that we're not confused, but if you remember its efficiency, it might be easier for us to always remember it without needing to memorize any equations, is what we want to maximize, what, the, what we want to get out of this equipment, divided by what we need to put in. So in this case, what we want here is to maximize this guy as much as we can, right? We want to remove as much energy as we can from our house. Remember the cold reservoir is our house. So in this case, we want to maximize our QL as much as possible. And what we need to put in is the energy to operate the AC, that is the work. Okay? So and if you relate this guy with the bottom guy, what we end up having is that I can substitute QL and sorry, I can substitute Q in by working, excuse me, by Q out minus Q in, right? Q low or Q. So we can do Q in as well. It's another way to think of it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides by Q in or QL, doesn't matter, whatever you think is best to call it, and divide on the upper side and the lower side by this so that we don't alter the equation. And then what happens is that we get one here, and over here we get Q out over Q in, or in other words, we could, this could also be understood as Q high divided by Q low minus one, right? And then minus one. So then we'll put this on to the side so we don't get confused. It's just another way to write this, okay? And then 
not that we don't know, we, we don't know these values just yet. But what we do know is that the question is asking us for the minimum amount. And that's quite important. Let's go back and look at that. Determine the minimum power required. So what does that imply? If it's a minimum power require, required, it means that the minimum we need to put needs to disregard any irreversibilities. So no, let's put it this way, no irreversibilities, right? And what does that mean? Well, this means that we're talking about an isentropic process, right? So if reversible, then delta S is zero. So in other words, we can think of it, another way to think of it is that S gen, right, the entropy generated, no, sorry, S gen is zero, right? We're not generating any entropy. We're doing a completely reversible process. And there's no reversibilities, which would be energies lost to the surroundings or inefficiency on the AC, something like that. Any of these reversibilities we would require my AC, would require me to give more energy to the AC so that it operates, right? So the minimum amount, minimum, and let me just stress that minimum, is obtained when we have a fully reversible process, right? And if that's the case, and only because that's the case, then we can substitute where we have our cubes, we can substitute by the temperature of the hot reservoir divided by the temperature of the cold reservoir, the lower. All right, so note that this jump here from this side of the equation to this one here is not something that is you can always do. In this case, we're doing because we're, we're looking for the minimum energy requirement. If we have any reversibilities, then we're going to need to put more energy in this, right? The next thing, I need you guys to remember every single time is that these guys have to be in Kelvin. And this is where a lot of people go wrong because they forget this has to be in Kelvin. Why is that? Because we're talking about absolute quantities here, right? Absolute quantities. So a good way to think of this is that, check out what would happen if our, the outside of the house was infinitely hot, right? So hot that this guy here actually tended to go into infinity. Well, if that went to infinity, then there's no way we can actually supply energy to that thing. So this whole bottom term here goes to infinity meaning that our efficiency goes to zero, right? What if, on the other hand, this guy here is at zero Kelvin, right? Absolute to zero, zero Kelvin. Well, if that's absolute zero, then there's no way that we can maintain our house at zero Kelvin. There will be energy going in, right? So if the whole thing, if it's zero Kelvin on the bottom there, then this term, this whole term here goes to infinity. And if that is the case, then this whole term here goes to infinity. And if that's the case, then this guy again goes to zero and we have efficiency of zero going on, right? So remember that these things only occur if we're talking about absolute temperature, so that has to be in Kelvin. So once we have that set up, then things are quite trivial because then we have our caught reservoir, which is 40, and then 273 to sum up with the Kelvin situation. Over here we have 21 Celsius plus the 273 minus 1. So that is easily converted into, that's at 313, divided by 294 minus 1. That gives me 15.47 approximately. And there's no units here because this is a coefficient of performance, the efficiency of it. So what this is saying is that for every one kilowatt that I put into this AC, it's going to remove 15.47 kilowatts from my home. Okay, so remember that we want 16 kilowatts. So that's actually pretty close to 15.47. So we need to put about one kilowatt, a bit more than one kilowatt to make this happen, right? In fact, we can calculate that quite easily because <clears throat> if um, you put one kilowatt, one, one, one kilowatt, then because the coefficient is 15.47, that means that we're gonna be removing 15.47 kilowatts, right? So for every, let's do like this, for every energy in that I put in here, I'm gonna get this QL or Q in out of this, right? So, and if I want to remove 16 kilowatts, what do I need here? What do I need here? Well, I just need to take 16 divided by the 15.47, right? And that gives me, 1.03 kilowatts. And that is our answer. All right, so if I put 1.03 kilowatts into this AC, then it's going to give me 16 kilowatts out in the QL. Right? So for every one kilowatt that I put in here, I get 16 over here. That, that's what the coefficient of performance is. That's what the efficiency of our AC is. All right, so I hope this got, this was useful for you guys. Hope we were able to keep our house nice and cold. Don't forget that this is the minimum power required, right? If we have any reversibilities, we need to put more than the 1.03 kilowatts, but depending on how much reversibilities we have, how much entropy we're generating in this um, process. So this is the bare minimum required if we have a completely reversible isentropic transformation happening there. Hope this was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you're always up to date. 
on the loop with what we're doing in problem solving and tips on different engineering topics. Talk soon.